So it's a new day here and uh, I went off today and I bought myself a SanDisk Extreme 16 gig Class 10 uh, micro SDHC and I'm hoping that uh, this will work as expected here in the recommended good performance section of the cards so that we can um, log all the packets or just about every single packet. It says here that we need to go off and um, format the tool using the SD associated formatting tool and uh, clicking that link brings you to their website. In short, uh, you either have the, the Windows one or the Mac one and scrolling all the way down to the bottom, you select which one you want, download it, install it and run it. Cool, so what I've done is I've extracted the software and opened up the application, so it's the SD formatter tool. Uh, there's no media in it at the moment, so I'll just uh, push that into my system and it should be found. Excellent, so now we see the new Apple SD card in this case and what we'll do is just do an overwrite format I'll call it D-Logger and it's just a matter of hitting the format button and let it do its uh, its business uh, it does say it might take a little bit of time so awesome and through the magic of video editing here we are format complete The other important part that you need to look at is within the configuration of the black box itself and how it actually writes to the micro SD card. So let's just take this for an example. If the SD card that you've got isn't as good as say a class 10 ultra high UH1 card that I've put in mine, then you might not be able to write as quick to that card. So what they've done is they've allowed you to be able to slow down what is being written to the card and it's by these two parameters here so it's black box rate num and black box rate denom so that's basically numerator and denominator so if you remember your uh, you know grade 4 grade 5 mathematics it's numerators on top and denominators on the bottom and by having it this way you actually get a ratio so in the CLI if you find that your system is not writing as well to your card, um, it might be worthwhile turning the denominator into two. So you'll get a fraction of a half. And that will write half as much to the system. Uh, by default, the numerator and denominator are set to one. And so you will get a, a one for one, hopefully, uh, data bit rate to the card. So one thing to check is the disk itself has the correct parameters set to it. So what I did was, after hooking everything up, I've um, enabled, well, put in a battery to the system and that turns on your open logger. The open logger will then go off and write a config file. So if I check this config file now, what I notice is that it's actually got 96 board and that's incorrect. So what we'll do is we'll edit this file directly to the SD card and what we need to do if we follow these parameters here within the github documentation it says that we need to put 115 200 board uh, so that it'll write correctly to our system so 115 200 board I'll just save that In Clean Flight, to enable black box, it's a matter of going over to the configuration tab and scrolling down to the black box setting. Enable that and just save and reboot. That's all that's needed to output data to your data recorder. Okay, here's a bit of an edit to the previous configuration. So under the ports tab, with MSP enabled on UI1, we can actually get some logging out of the system to the log device. However, I was getting some very intermittent um, drops in the data. So what I've read is that with PPM enabled, so I'm running PPM on my 
my quad. Uh, MPPM is uh, basically all eight channels sent down one wire, if that makes sense, compared to uh, sending them down individual discrete uh, channels to the NAS board. And if you set transmit and receive to pin 3 and pin 4 respectively, then you should be able to go on to UR2 and enable the black box there instead. So we'll turn it off there. And the other limitation is if you're running MSP, you can only log at 115,000 boards. So the other thing I found is that if you run it on UR2, you can actually run it 250,000 board without an issue. Uh, so just to recap, what I've done is I've resoldered, as per this picture here, everything to pin three, and I've actually left off pin four because I don't see why we actually need the back path from the system because we're only writing to it. So I want to give that a go. And uh, we've enabled the black box now on UR2, and I've set from 115,000 board to 250,000 board this system. The other thing I'll do is I'll go into the configuration file and I'll set 250,000 board as well so that it matches. So now I'm over to the open logger and we'll open up the configuration file and we'll set it to 250,000 board. I'll uh, just need to save that. File, save, and we're done. So we've got 250,000 board now also configured in the open logger device. So they match on both ends. Let's see how that goes. Fantastic. Now that we've got everything working, we've got a file that's recording, and now we need a way of being able to render this so that we can actually either overlay or at least see the output of the file so that we can understand either from a PIDs or from a crash perspective what was probably going on. So the guys have written a little plugin that fits into uh, Chrome and so if you just go to the web store and look for Chrome Black Flight Explorer beta, um, it's just a matter of then applying that to your browser. I've already done it of course so we'll just launch the app and this is what you see. <clears throat> what we now need to do is just pull in a file so that it actually can be rendered. In this case we're in the dlogger USB drive and we have a file here which starts with these parameters. Uh, this seems to be the continuation file for this original one and uh, it's a matter of just going open to that and it'll open up into this window. There's a couple of good options here, uh, it gives you the log details but if you were to play the file it starts to render the outputs of your flight. So we see here in this section are the motors, they correspond to this and here are the gyros which correspond to the roll pitch and yaw and these are all configurable so we can um, go into the graph setup and you can add what you want or remove what you don't want from each of the axis and vice versa for the graph 2 which happens to be the bottom section of it. So we'll save those changes and if we keep playing we see the flight so we see some gyro changes and some corresponding motor change to keep that in, in line and a, a nice visual. So all the logging looks cool but you really want to be able to overlay this video now of course to one on a recorded Mobius or GoPro uh, video stream that you've got. Well the guys have also thought about that so in the same radial button where you open a log file, you can open a video file. So we'll just open and browse this to the flight that corresponds to this log. And there what you'll see is a rendered background over the top of the overlay of the telemetry that you've collected for this flight. Um, you can of course play that and the video 
will play in the background along with the telemetry and so forth. In this case, I've also reduced the outputs. I've uh, taken out the motors and gyros to give it a cleaner look via the graph setup. Um, and you'll see this take off in a second. And there we go, it's taken off. Uh, and of course, the issue that we've got here is that the telemetry doesn't necessarily line up with the video. So the sliding bar here gives you a video position. So we'll just bring it back to probably to the point of lift off. And you can go start log here. And it's now a matter of just really playing around with it to work out where the two correspond, so where your telemetry and where your video play plays, uh, so that throttles up uh, correspond to lift off and so forth. Well, that was a lot to digest, and I really hope that this video was useful. If you like what you saw, please subscribe if you haven't already, and recommend the video to others so that they can get Black Box up and running on their Clean Flight or uh, Beta Flight systems with an open logger. And of course, um, just a quick reminder that you don't need open loggers if there's enough memory on the flight controller itself, such as the F3 and uh, the new NASE that's come out, the version 6. And uh, it's just a matter of enabling, enabling the uh, logging straight to those devices. Uh, look, I really hope it has been useful and best of luck. Thank you.